Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Nettleman. I'm a Florida and Texas surveyor as well as an attorney. I've helped so many of my university students pass their FS exams, and I created an online course to help you, everybody else that can't be at the university, to pass it as well. I've looked at or discussed many, many of these exams and how they went and the focus and the topics. And unfortunately, this exam is really broad. But I want to come in and talk briefly about three of my most essential skills. This is stuff that is basically always tested on the FS. And although I can't teach you everything in just a few minutes, I can give you some really specific advice about what you should know before going into this exam, because I can almost guarantee you it'll be in your test questions. When you look at the FS exam, it's huge. You know, they cover basically four years of surveying school, a bachelor's of surveying, and they distill eight semesters of information into one 110 question exam. So it's really, really broad. If you've seen enough of these darn exams, you begin to really see patterns. And these are patterns of key information, stuff that is tested on every exam or almost every exam. And this is the stuff you should know cold. Take a look at our focus. There are many, many categories, but if you know mathematics, survey processes, survey computations, and legal aspects, all four of those, then you can pretty much pass, I don't know, 60 or 70% of the exam on the first try. So let's cover some of my favorite topics on this exam and let's go through it step by step. When I look at how you learn, I tell people you've got to have a toolbox. Now, not a toolbox in terms of screwdrivers and duct tape, but a toolbox of knowledge. And this toolbox, you get skills. You go through a drafting class. You build a subdivision. That's a skill. You go to legal aspects and you learn the priority of calls, another skill. And your job throughout your studies and your work is to put together as many skills as you can inside of your mental toolbox. And when I think about which tools are used the most for the FS exam, I tell people three things. First of all, priority of calls. Second of all, trig, both basic trig and real world. And third, accuracy versus precision. Accuracy and precision are really basic to me, but I'm always shocked at how many people don't know the difference. So let's cover all three of these subjects and let's go in depth and talk about them. I am gonna give you one caveat. That is, this is a short video. So if you wanna know about all these subjects, purchase the FS bundle, which is my FS prep course, and I guarantee you, we will spend at least an hour on all three of these subjects. But nonetheless, let's jump in. Number one is our priority of calls. The priority of calls is used to resolve evidence conflicts. Beginning at the property corner, the legal description says go 150 feet southwest to a rebar. Okay, I'm retracing the survey I start off the beginning point, I find the rebar, it is not southwest. It is actually, oh, I don't know, 270 degrees and five minutes. A little different. It's not 150 feet. It's actually 148.758257 feet. Now, don't do that because that's a, that's a violation of significant digits. But anyways, our bearing and distance differ slightly but we found the monument. What do you do? Do you hold the bearing? Do you hold the distance? Or do you hold the monument? Well, an artificial monument is a rebar. So according to our hierarchy of evidence, a monument is a higher standard than 
bearing or distance, therefore we hold the monument. I guarantee you that I've seen this like a thousand times on the FS exam. And let me give you some examples. First example is, a question says, rank the dignity of survey evidence from highest to lowest. So there's a bunch of options. I drag up natural monument, then I drag up artificial, then I drag up bearing distance, then I drag up area, hit submit, I'm done. Two questions later, a land surveyor is hired to complete a boundary survey of a 53 acre tract. During the retracement, she finds all monuments as described in the original survey. But the bearing is differencing by about one degree and the distance is differing by about five hundredths of a foot. Which of the following correctly describes how the surveyor should resolve the issue? The purpose of this question is to bog you down because there is a lot of information in here. But your job is to use the priority of calls and to pick the right decision. So what do I think? Is this an, a natural monument? No. A is eliminated. Should you hold the bearing and distance? No. B is eliminated. The land surveyor should hold the two monuments because artificial monuments are senior to bearing and distance. Check me. C, Charlie, is correct. They could ask you the priority of calls in a thousand different ways, but as long as you know the list or the dignity, that's all you need. Our second key knowledge area is triangles. If I give you two sides and one angle, can you solve for the two missing angles and one missing side? Well, I hope you can because I know a couple basic rules. My rule is A plus B plus C equals 180. So if I'm given two angles, 60 and 60, 60 plus 60 is 120, the remaining angle is 60. All right, what about sides? Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If I've got a hypotenuse and I have an adjacent angle, I would say A squared plus adjacent side equals our hypotenuse side. Do a little algebra and find A. Pretty simple. Now you may have to get into more advanced theorems like the theory of sines and theory of cosines, but let me stop you right there and tell you I'm lazy. I don't like doing math. I don't like adding or subtracting or doing algebra. So I've got a pretty nifty HP 35. And this thing will solve all of your triangles for you. It's very fast. It'll solve any triangle. It's amazing. So my advice is get an HP 35, get it pre-programmed, and then run this yourself. Another type of triangle question is the practical question. They will show you a building or a tree or an object or a flagpole and they'll give you some angles, they'll give you some distances and what's really crazy is sometimes it's like triangle on top of triangle and you have to use these different theorems. Well, one side is equal to the other side triangle and then do your theorems which we discuss on the FS Advanced Math course. But know that you've got to be able to really put this to practice. Knowing a triangle theorem is great, but you have to be able to look at the scenario, diagnose what angles and distances are there and which ones are missing, and then solve a multiple triangle problem, which really freaks people out. But if you've done it a few times, you'll be just fine. Now, the last thing is going to be accuracy versus precision. Webster's defines accuracy as the degree to which the result of a measurement, calculation, or specification conforms to the correct value or a standard. I don't know what that means, but my definition of accuracy is I know the bullseye. 
That is my monument. The closer my survey gets to the monument, the more accurate I am. We'll see a chart later on. But here, you are measuring one measurement versus the true value. And the closer you get to the benchmark, the more accurate you are. The next definition is precision. And Webster says precision is refinement in a measurement, a specification, especially represented by numbers of digits. I have no idea what that means either. But my definition of precision is how closely can you get a series of measurements? Not to the true value, but how close can a series of measurements be in relation to one another? So my surveyor's compass, which I have used before, it's pretty cool, measures to the nearest 15 degrees. Measures to the nearest 15 minutes. That is one quarter of a degree. If I shot a benchmark 10 times, I could be up to 15 minutes different in every measurement. That is a very poor precision. Now, wait a minute. Now I pull out my Leica total station and I measure the total station to the nearest second. Bam, bam, bam. That is a very, very precise instrument. The total station is to the nearest one second. The compass is to the nearest 15 minutes. Big difference. So let's look at this in real world terms. We've got four bullseyes. And going clockwise, we'll say it's A, B, C, and D. Which one is accurate and which one is precise? You know that C is not accurate and not precise, and you know A is both accurate and precise. But what about B and D? Which one is accurate and which one is precise? The precise one is where all the measurements are clustered together. So B is precise. C is accurate. Why is it accurate? because each point is measured around the bullseye. You absolutely have to know the difference between accuracy and precision. Let me put that one more way. Would you rather be accurate or would you rather be precise? The GPS surveyor has a GPS and he can measure down to the nanosecond. It's amazing. But if that GPS surveyor is not smart enough to know what is a real benchmark. He could be measuring to the wrong point. That's stupid. I would much rather have a surveyor with an old instrument that knows the basic principles who can get to the benchmark than I would having one of these guys with a GPS who's never seen a benchmark in his life. So if someone ever asks you, would you rather be accurate or precise? I would choose accuracy every time. Well, this reaches the end of our FS3 Top Skills video. I hope you've learned a lot in the last few minutes, and I really sincerely hope you'll join me for the full FS prep course available at nlcprep.com fs.